Hello, 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 hello. It's Kate Bolt, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the UK. I'm back for another Fun Friday Live. Sorry, I'm hesitating a little. That's but I seem to have switched Siri on, um, <laughs> which is very strange. So a little hiccup. There we are. There we go. <laughs> oh, there we go. Happy Friday to you. Good afternoon. It is afternoon and I normally come live in the morning. So I'm very confused, but that doesn't take very much. <laughs> right, I'm going to just wait a few minutes and see if anybody hops on live with me. My time has changed again. It's been quite an interesting couple of months with um, our youngest off doing his GCSE exams. So I'm in and out the house at really odd times, dropping him to school, picking him up and all that kind of stuff. So, but this is the last one today. Hooray. So normality can resume for him and everyone else. Huzzah. Hurrah, hurrah, hurrah. Right. I'm just going to check on my laptop, make sure that I am alive in the right place and that everything is going to plan. Yes. There we go. There we are. So just check that that's good. See if anybody hops on live with me and then I can see the comments if anybody joins me live. So I had my team meeting last night and it was super fun. It was absolutely lovely. We all meet. I've got team members from across the country. So we all meet on Zoom every month and we do a little bit of crafting. We catch up with all the Stampin' Up! news, all the things that are happening. And it's so lovely to see their faces. We do do in-person events as well. But generally, our monthly meetings are online so everyone can attend, which is really nice. And we did have a bit of fun creating a fun fold card one of the ladies asked if we could make a fun fold card hello sam happy friday to you thanks for joining me um one of the ladies asked if we could make a simple fun fold card um so i was trying to look for something new to me so i had a, had a look around everywhere and i found this one made by this is my version of it made by patty bennett absolutely brilliant it is hers is called a 2468 card and it's made in inches imperial um and it's scored at 246 and 8 however i've converted it to metric i'm not making this today but i might well do um i've converted it to metric so i can't call ours a 2468 card but it's very simple it's such a fun fold um absolutely brilliant so that's a simple one with the daisies and I made one with some of that beautiful paper. And this is the stamp set I'm going to be using today for our card, the Good Feeling stamp set. Sam, I'm sorry you couldn't join us last night. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have recorded our Zoom and I'll put it in our little group so you can watch it back and see how we made that card. But I may well do a YouTube video. And uh, when I make it, I'll link Patty's in as well so you can see the original. But I did have a question last night um, also from one of my team members who says, can you talk about the pens, the marker pens? She, she often gets confused between the two and what they're useful for and the other uses for them. So generally in Stampin' Up! we have two types of pens and I thought I'd have a little talk about it today and use them in my card. So these are just some of our Stampin' Right markers. These are one set, one type of pen we do. Hello, Janice. Thanks for joining me again. It's lovely to see you. These are just a few of the Stampin' Right markers. They come in every single colour, including the in colour families of um, all the colours in Stampin' Up. Oh, I'm glad you had a fun evening running your class. I can't wait to see what you made. Sam's in my team and she runs amazing classes and she is very talented. Um, so yeah, so these are the Stampin' Right markers and they come in all of the colours and you can buy them as a big collection or you can buy them in the little packs of their colour families, whatever you prefer, and the in colours. So they're those. They're a water-based marker. They're like very fancy felt tip pens and they have a, that's one of our old style that we've just got a new style come in. I'll show you one of the new ones. Um, I'll show you that the, the thin end they have a very fancy thin end for coloring in for detail and for writing and also they have sorry just trying to see the comments too we have a brush tip end 
and you're not meant to write on yourself with them. Um, and you can colour in large areas and you can do other things with it too. So these are our Stampin' Write markers and I love these. I've got all of the colours, you can get them um, in a big case. Right, I'm going to move them over. And these are some of our stamping blends. And these are different. And we have these in lots and lots and lots of the colour families. But we also have a whole set of neutral shades too. Of which I have rather a lot of them just on the desk here. Because that was what I was using. So these are square in shape. So they're different. They also have a brush tip end and a thin end. So you can see those. But these are alcohol-based markers and they blend a bit like your Copic markers. Um, that's the type of marker they are. They're not water-based, they're alcohol-based. Um, and when you buy them, you buy them in a set of two of each colour, a dark and a light shade, specifically so that you can blend and shade and get that lovely kind of different depth texture to your to your colouring in. That's those. I'm going to move them out of the way. They are not refillable. Okay, let me move those over. Um, but we do, we are going to play with these. They make a nice sound. <laughs> so, but I'm going to show you a different thing today, not colouring in with them. And I hope it works out because I haven't prepared this class, this, um, sorry, this, this YouTube yet at all. This has popped into my head. It's like, I really want to do this and I want to do it this morning. So I haven't played with this stamp set yet. I pulled one of the stamp sets out at class last night. But thank you. And I haven't played with it at all. And this is called Good Feelings. How gorgeous is this? Sending sunshine and good feelings your way. I'm just going to have a drink. It's got a thank you. I'm just so happy for you. You're on my mind and in my heart and hip hip hooray. This is brilliant because it's a really big sentiment. It can take up the front of your card. And I really like that. So I'm going to pull that one out. That's sending sunshine. I'm going to have a play with it. And create a really simple card. But the idea of the, making the simple card is just to show you how you can get more out of your Stampin' Right markers. And I'm hoping it's going to work because I haven't done this for ages. <laughs> so take your your backing off your sticker when you're putting your stickers on your new stamps and then take this backing off as well and you've got that gray lovely cushiony foam and then very very carefully and I say carefully because it's once it's on it doesn't really come off you line it up with the stamp and press down and then your backing will be on there we go okay so got my stamp I'm gonna pop it to the side I've got a card layer this card layer is just basic white and it's 9.5 by 13.8 centimeters I'm gonna put a card base behind it and another layer so I've made it that size but also because I wanted to frame this lovely big sentiment I picked out some um, dies I picked out the stitch with whimsy dies for these and this is I think this is the largest one and it's a stitched shape. Oh, no, this is the largest one. But I think it was going to be too big for what I wanted today. It's not that big. But you get all of these included. Loads of them. They're all double stitched. It looks like they're running stitches going around them. And I'm going to run my uh, layer through it. Now, it won't cut this out. It will cut out the stitching, if that makes sense. So I'm going to run that through my Stampin' Up! Cut and Emboss machine, which is right here. Ooh. I might go through my little one. I haven't tried. But I'm going to put it through this one. So how's the weather with you wherever you are? We ha always have to talk about the weather as Brits. It is stunning here today. It's another gorgeously hot day. I think we're going to get about 26 degrees in Buckinghamshire. Let me know what it's going to be like with you. I love to know what the weather's doing. I was up early this morning, um, had a bit of a run. Then I went to the dog for a walk. 
And then I was getting ready, Jacob, to go to his exam. So lots going. Oh, and I picked up the shopping as well for my click and collect. Can you see that? So it embosses those two lines like you've got stitching all the way around. And it's actually made holes. Can you see? It's really nice. I wonder if you could stitch that with some very fine thread. I have no idea. It might be worth a try. Can only go one of two ways, I suppose. So this is um, an e-block. This one is a nice big one that fits this large stamp. So this is where our stamping right markers are going to come in. So I haven't stamped an image that I want to colour in. If I stamped flowers or butterflies or whatever, I could colour it in with these. But I'm actually going to colour the words in. And I've got to decide. I'm going to go for something bright. Berry burst. Granny apple green. Let's see how many words we've got. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think we'll go with... Daffodil Delight. This is going to be very in your face. Uh, as your afternoon. Oh, has Poppy Parade retired? No, we've still got Poppy Parade, haven't we? I think we have. Yeah, and yeah, it was an old one I'm thinking of. Oh, we've got Sweet Sorbet. Maybe I want Sweet Sorbet. Which one? Which one? Right, I'm going to go with Sweet Sorbet. And what's this one? Orchid Oasis. So how many? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, four, six. I want one more. Uh, I think I'm going to take that granny apple out and put in lemon lime. And I think I might grab gorgeous grape, have a nice bright purple. All right, now, so I'm going to randomly do this, so there's no rhyme or reason. I'm going to go with this one first. Uh, the purple, let's go with the purple first. So I'm going to take the brush end of the tip of the stamp and write marker. Oh, it's lovely there, is it, Janice? You're expecting 25 as well. Gorgeous. Such nice weather. And I am using the side. Be careful with them. You do not want to smoosh or crush or damage your tip. So use the side of your marker. And you're colouring in the top of the stamp. Colouring in the, the word. Colour it in well. I'm going to cover it all up. Like that. Another fun way of doing it is, is you can kind of go onto the word above and do half in one colour and half in another colour. That's really nice. It gives an ombre effect. I think I'm going to go for the yellow next. I hope the yellow shows up. This is daffodil. This is a very old daffodil pen. I bought my Stampin' Right markers, my the this daffodil one and most of these. Um, I joined Stampin' Up! seven years ago, something like that. So they're doing very well. You can see this daffodil one has been... I use them in classes too, so it's not just me, but this daffodil one has been a bit used and abused, but it's still going all right. So that's that one. As your afternoon, that's a new colour, so a new pen. It's going to be quite a vibrant one. Now, it may not turn out very well because I haven't tried this yet. The colours might be wrong or one might be too pale, but we're going to try. Oh, I only want the blue on that one. Let's go for the green. It's a bit of fun. So you can colour in your rubber stamps with your pens. Now, I'm not sure it works quite so well on the photopolymer. Um, but it definitely works well on the red rubber. So 
So if you had a packet of the pens and you didn't have all the ink pads, you could definitely use this here in place of an ink pad. Does that make sense? So you're going to get a little bit more rather than just colouring in with them. Um, I might put in Berry Burst at the bottom. That would be quite pink, won't it? But let's go for it. Might be a bit shocking. <laughs> Because I do know at the very beginning, I didn't have every single colour of ink pad. When you first start stamping, you don't own everything in the book. Uh, no, who does? I mean, you know. And so I bought the markers and I had some ink pads. And when I didn't have the right colour, I used the markers. And it really made my stash stretch. Okay, so I think I've done them all. Now, you might imagine that by the time I get to the bottom, the top has dried. So what you need to do is huff on it <laughs> really hard to create some moisture. Obviously not friendly if you're doing this in a group. Don't do that. And don't put your face on it. <laughs> and I might colour that top one in again. I think we used um, gorgeous grape. We're going to try. I'm going to go for it. <sighs> right, here we are. Let's see how it works. Keep everything crossed because it might be skew if, it might not turn out, it might not be bright enough, but you get the idea of how you can use your pens in this way. Okay, shall we try? Oh, that's worked. How lovely is that? Oh, I'm quite impressed with it. It came out well. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this technique. So use your pens, your water-based stamping right markers to colour in your red rubber stamps. Um, and you can make all your words a different colour. If this was an image of um, flowers and trees, you can colour the flowers one colour, you can colour the leaves another colour and get a really pretty uh, impression that way too. So it's not just words, it's anything, anything at all that you can colour in different colours like that. So what colour base are we going to go for? I am feeling this sweet sorbet. <laughs> Here we go. I've got some sweets. I've got all the in colour from last year. In colour card pack as a collection there, which is very useful. So let's make a card base. Or we could put the red. What card base should we have and what layer should we have? I'm feeling gorgeous grape if I've got any. This is nice. I have a whole unopened packet of it. <sighs> oh dear. <laughs> Am I the only person who gets excited by unopened new packs of things? It doesn't have to be particularly anything special. It could be just glue. <laughs> Anything. Envelopes. Cardstock. I get excited by all these things. <sighs> Right, so are we going this way? I think we should go that way. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make this our layer. So I'm going to cut my sweet sorbet at 14.3 because that's my first layer size by 10 centimetres. Yeah. Oh, I do apologise, the dog's barking at some other dog going by. So it fits lovely. And then this one, we are going to score at ten and a half. 
right down the middle of the short side and cut at 14.8. So that's just an A4 sheet of cardstock, scored in half, cut in half, and you will end up with two lovely card bases. Like that, so I've got a spare one. So sending sunshine and good feelings your way. No idea where my bone folder has gone. Have I got another one? Yes. I have one here. It's not my normal one, but it'll do the job. There we are. So that's that. And now we need a white piece to go inside. The dog's outside barking. He's so naughty. Somebody goes by and he thinks they shouldn't be. He's so naughty. But he just barks away. He's not like, it's not ferocious or anything like that. Oh, that's too short. Oh, no, that's the right size. I want it 14.3. So that's right. That's my inside. And then I'm going to stamp um, the inside. Let's see, is my seal working? I think I'm at the end of it. I'm going to stamp the inside later. So I've got to decide what I'm going to put inside. And I might just do the same thing with the pens to create a really nice uh, inside to that. So, sending sunshine your way. Very simple card. And that's going to go on the front. Oh no, the dog wants to know what we're doing, so he's coming in here. <laughs> Wherever I am, he generally is, though, to be fair. Okay, so there we go. I've got a few of these sequins that we can pop on the front just to jazz it up a little. Let's do that. Jazz it up. So these are the pastel adhesive back sequins. So sequins. So they're basically pastel colours, sticky back sequins. Come on out. And they're in gold and they're in, that looks like the new um, bubble bath. And this looks like Tahitian Tide. Did I use Tahitian Tide? Or did I use Azure Afternoon? Yeah, so I used Azure Afternoon. Let's move that one because that's annoying me. And I might just put, let's try the gold ones. Oh, yeah. A little bit of sparkle. <laughs> Thank you, Janice. You've got to have a bit of sparkle on there, don't we? <laughs> Otherwise, it won't work. Should I pop it there? Yeah, just a little one up here somewhere. Move it over a bit, though. There we are. So there's a very, very simple card for this, uh, my first card this morning. Super simple. Um, where do I put my white layer? Doesn't matter. I'm going to stamp on that later. I'm not happy with that there. Uh, there we go. I'm going to stamp on that later and pop it in. So, but there you go. So you can use your Stampin' Right markers for all sorts. Yeah. You can, and they're all available in my online shop. And you can, as I say, you can buy them in packs or in the large pack. So I'll move that one to the side. And then I'm going to show you um, a little bit of colouring in with the stamping blends. So you can get to see both types of our lovely um, pens today. So I don't know if you've seen this lovely stamp set in a catalogue. It's amazing. It's called Night of Flight. And most of us are not really into moths, are we? Now, I might be a bit unusual because I really love moths. I think they're fascinating creatures. 
Don't get me wrong, if there's a big fluffy one flying around my head, not so happy. But they are amazing looking things, aren't they? And you can get some huge ones if you look on the internet. Oh my word. So, and we've had some big ones in the house years, uh, you know, over the years too, in the summer. Um, let's make this, let's make this 10, no, 9.5. I'm going to do a little bit of stamping with the moths and then a little bit of colouring in. 13.8 uh, centimetres, so just a sliver off there. Yeah, a bit of fun. So, we've got our moths. And they are gorgeous, photopolymer. Janice, did you use the moss in your live yesterday as well? Brilliant. I think they're getting really popular because the reason I bought them was because, I'll show you something. One of the girls in uh, my wider team made a similar looking card to this. Um, and I was blown away. She put it in the Facebook group and I was like, I couldn't really see it as well in the Facebook group. And I said to her, is that a photo that's black and white? It's amazing. And she said, no, I've stamped grey on the grey cardstock. She said, I've based it on another demonstrator who was doing it on YouTube called Ruth Trice. So have a look at Ruth's as well. Um, and I, her one sheet wonder. So I went over and looked at Ruth's and it was amazing. So did Artful Stamping, really. So it seems to be a really popular thing that's going on. Uh, making these moths and doing them in these greys. Really beautiful. And then they went, and I had a go at it, and took our blender pen, which is a different thing altogether. It's a pen and you can use it for watercolouring and picking up ink with. And I picked up the white pigment ink from an ink pad and just did their bodies because I was watching Ruth and she did the same. And I loved it, absolutely loved it. And so I saw this card in our group and that inspired me to purchase it. It's a host stamp set. So if you don't know what that is, oh, that is Ruth. Of course it's Ruth. <laughs> yes, Ruth is artful stamping. Thank you, Janice. I was getting very confused. Um, it's a great video. I love what she's done. If you don't know what a host set is, Host set is one that's um, a lot cheaper in the catalogue, it's subsidised, so you get it for a very, um, you get it for free, but when you place an order in the catalogue of £150 or more, you start to get what's called stamping rewards. It's like you have earned this amount of product credit for making such a large order. And it comes from when we did parties and things like that, and you all grouped together with your friends, put in a large order, and if it came to that amount, you could then get product credit, 10% of what it was. And you could put it toward, put put these subsidised stamp sets in it. And this is one of the host sets we've currently got. So if you did place an order that large, you would get this one for free. Um, and they're in the back of the catalogue and you can find them there. Or if you've got any questions over what host is or how it works, do drop me a message because I'm more than happy to, to help you understand that. Okay, but they are, yeah, it's quite simple, just sounds complicated. And they're fabulous. So it's a free one. Yeah, so you don't have to spend it all yourself. You can do a collective order under one host code and you can get the stamping rules and get this stamp set. Anyway, I, dig I digress. I'm going to get some of them out. I'm going to get out this gorgeous one and this lovely one. And then just one more, I think, this one. And there are bits you can fill them in with. So there's this another set of wings. Hello, Amanda. How are you? Thank you for joining me. There's another set of wings you can fill in with. You can fill in your big moth with. Um, and there's a tail, the tail, so they'll fit in here. And they will stamp those ones and these ones. Um, there's some more smaller pieces that fit in. Um, and lots of bits. And I did that on this one. So on this one that I just showed you, oops, this was done in basic gray, I think, basic gray or gray granite. And these, these were smoky slate, these wings and these extra pieces. So that's the fill in pieces, but I'm just going to use 
I'm just going to use these. The weather's great here. Thanks, Amanda. It's lovely. We are absolutely loving it at the moment. We are living our best lives in the UK. Um, although it's Father's Day on Sunday and it's going to rain, of course. So the barbecue that we had planned may be soggy <laughs> or indoors. But, you know, it'll be grand. It'll be fun. So let me grab my memento. There it is. <laughs> and I'm going to do a bit of random stamping just so I can show you our stamping right markers. No, I've used those already. Our stamping blend markers. So I am going to stamp one of them up. If I stamp the stamps, you can um, ink the stamps, you can actually see, see them, see the detail. The dog just groaned when he laid down. <laughs> he had a lovely walk this morning. I took him down the lake and he had a little dip. Cooled off. Now he's a smelly pup. <laughs> How beautiful is that? It's gorgeous. Janice, I'll go back and watch yours. I'm excited to see what you've done. This is a very simple card just to show off our lovely pens. And they come in all the colours. I happen to have chosen lots of neutrals, um, but they come in all the beautiful colours, exactly the same. They don't come in all of the colours, do they? They come in pretty much all of the colours. The, the Stampin' Right markers and the blends come in the same, pretty much. I'm going to put this, ink this one up next, I think, to make sure I've got enough room. Like that. Now, I didn't know what colour I was going to colour in my um, moths. So I actually was inspired by a post I saw on social media put out by Stampin' Up! themselves, um, showing the gorgeous moths. So watch out for things like that because you get lots of inspiration. Um, and you can always look in your catalogue as well. There, there isn't um, any samples made up in the catalogue of this one. Hence, they've put it on the social media instead, I think. So. Make sure you use your catalogue as an ideas book, because after all, that's what it's for. Right, I'm going to move all my stamps out of the way. And I've stamped it. My son loves moths. I think he'd like this. So I picked out some colours. I cannot for the life of me. I've made the card already as a sample, but I can't for the life of me remember which colour they are. So if you look at these, each set comes in a set of two. So this is Night of Navy, dark and light. So you'd buy them like that as a combo set and you can blend and shade those colours together. Okay, so we've got those. So all of the colours come like that. Yeah except for let me get these together these are all numbered and these are all like a whole lot of neutral shades and these are fantastic because all those skin tones or different shades that you want in all these neutrals there's a whole range of them which is pretty fantastic um, and you could use them for buildings, you know, anything you need all those browns and light neutrals for. Perfect. So I thought I was going to use some of those today. But I can't remember which one I use for what. So I'm going to start off with this. Oh, I haven't got... There's a, one missing. It's a purpley colour I used. Let's grab it. It's gone. I'll put it away. Highland Heather. Highland Heather 
So I'm not doing traditional moth colours. I'm just going to show you how to use the Stampin' Blends. And I took inspiration from the post from Stampin' Up. So when I use my blends, I tend to use the small end. Oh, that one out. And I tend to lay down my dark colour first. Now, we all do it slightly differently. So, if you're used to doing it differently, go with what you're used to doing. Everyone finds the way that works for them. But I like to lay my dark colour down first. And then I will blend the light into it. So, here's the light one. Like this. So you can see that these are different to the pens that we used when we were colouring in the stamp just now. You can colour in images with those two. But you can see how this blends. And you get the lighter shade at the top and you get the darker shade at the bottom. So I'm doing that there. These pens you can't colour your stamps with. It doesn't work anywhere near as well. Well, maybe you could try, but I've, I have tried and I haven't really been successful. And it's also stained my stamps. But, um, you know, maybe you'll have better luck than me. But the stamping right markers, you can definitely do it as we just did. So I'm having a bit of a colourful moth going on here and I think I'm going to go around and use the same colours on all the bits that need it. <laughs> so tell me if you use pens for colouring in which are your favourite out of these two? The Stampin' Right markers or the blend pens? Stampin' blends. I'd love to know. I've been asked that and I always say these ones because you can blend the shades. But if you asked me if these broke or ran out would I replace them yes I would straight away <laughs> so yeah because they have different uses and they're so nice and you can color in with them too so this is calypso coral and I'm going to do the same here bit of dark shade gonna come around and this is a very patient of you card today if you're sticking with me because you're just getting bored by my colouring in. Um, and I might go and do the bottom of this one. Like that. And this one as well. It's like painting by numbers, but it's not. You choose whatever colour you want. I did look some moths up on the internet and they are absolutely glorious, some of them. Right, so that's that. And then I need to... Go in with a light. And then come all the way up through. Not sure it needs to be Calypso Coral, but it is, and that's fine with me. Do the same here. Like that, and then this one. So 
So you just blend that line in so you don't get any harsh line in the gradient of the, the shading and it will go away and you've just got this lovely dark and light side there, which is nice. Now I've just got to remember, now I know that one of the first colours I used was 700, so these uh, neutral shades have all got numbers on the side and they kind of go from dark to light, I think. Um, and I'm going to see what colour that looks like. Okay, I think this was the wings of this one. And you can find a darker shade and blend them together. I'm just going to colour the whole wing in, I think, for speed. <sighs> I don't know if you can hear my dog. Please tell me, can you hear my dog? He's like... He's not snoring, but he's breathing really heavily. <laughs> I'm so excited today because it is the last day of Jacob's exams. So GCSE season is done. Oh my word, I'm so pleased it's done. However, I know we've just got to wait for the results, but um, yeah, it's very odd really because that will be when I pick him up this afternoon. That will be the last time I pick him up from this school because he's hoping to go on to sixth form, but they're not offering one at this school. It's a new school. They don't have funding for the sixth form yet, um, which is very irritating, but it is what it is. And um, yeah, so it's the last time I'll be picking him up from the school. So it's very strange. It's the end of an era. So I'm hoping he's going to sixth form. We'll just have to keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> oh dear. What will be, will be long as he's happy there we go so that's that bit but yeah it's um oh, i need to do the middle a little uh, darker shade um when my eldest started school it was her fifth birthday on her first day of school and this september she turns 25 <laughs> so that gives you an indication of how long I've been doing a school run. So I'm not sure if Jacob's um, celebrating the end of the exams or I'm celebrating the end of that kind of school run. <laughs> Although if he's at six full, there'll still be a bit of something going on. Right, okay, so I need a darker shade and I think it was this one. Let's have a look which is 200. If you look at the moths on the internet, they're all these lovely shades of browns and kind of almost gold, but not tans. I love colouring in. I find it really relaxing. But obviously, if you're watching this on replay, do feel free to fast forward because it may be a bit mind numbing. <laughs> so we've got this, we've got this, um, that one, and then, right. Let's finish off the middle of this one in that Calypso Coral, the same as we did the others. That one, and then this one is brown. Right, let's work on him. Let's get some of him done. It's a darker colour, this one. This one's 700, this one's 600. So let's go for the 600 and see. I think it's this colour. 
And I was just playing around with the colours, seeing which one I fancied. So there's no right or wrong, I just went for it. Here we go. So yeah, they are beautiful pens to work with. I was never a colorer. You know, you can see people who do these incredible things. They're like works of art with all the shading. Um, I've never been that kind of person to be as clever as that, but not even I can go wrong with these markers. Right. Like that. This is the same one, isn't it? So let's do that the same. You can take more time. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can add more shading to the bodies and the wings. Oops, I went over the line, but we won't worry. It's a handmade card. We do have a colour lifter that pushes the colour back if you go wrong. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. So if you have a little bit that you think you've gone outside of the lines, you can just kind of... Push the colour back like that. Wait for it to dry and then I'll go back over it and you won't even know. <laughs> right, so let's do this bit. It is very hot all of a sudden in my craft room. I think I need to come and open some more windows. There we are, so that's that. I'm gonna come back in with an even darker color. This is a darker shade again, so this is gonna be lower, isn't it? Yeah, this is 100, so I think this might be the darkest shade. Have I got them all out of the my storage caddy? I don't know, but I've got a lot of them out. So this one, I'm gonna do the top, but you can still see the lines, the shady lines through it. And these, I don't know what these are called, they're beautiful. It's that, and just this at the top. There we go. That's too dark. What colour was it I was using? Is it this one? Yeah, there you go. You never knew. <laughs> so one of these is Calypso Coral and one of them is Highland Heather, isn't it? So if we do the opposite, that would look right. So a little bit of Highland Heather. Put 
blend that in. And then the same with the coral. And then we're pretty much done with this card. So I'm thinking you could make a card like this for any occasion, really. Well, you know, a celebration card, a birthday card, a good luck card. What kind of card would you put a moth on? Hello, I'm thinking of you. Lots of reasons, but definitely birthday cards for people who love moths. At this time of the year especially. So... Those are our alcohol blend pens. As I say, you can get them in loads and loads of different colours. You get your colour lifter. Put all the neutrals in these earthy tones, which are brilliant. And then it's just a case of finding a card base. I think I'm going to go with the other one that I had left over. And it tones in with that Highland Heather. This is gorgeous grape. And have I got any black? Let's have a look. think that would go behind nicely. Even go that way. Yeah, I might do it that way. So, let's make this. I've got a funny piece of card here, haven't I? I don't know if that's the right size. Score it on the long side. See if it's in half. Yeah, that's in half. So we'll cut it, is it? Yeah, we'll cut it at 10.5. Then we've got our card and we'll cut this into a layer instead so I want it 10 centimeters by 14.3 yeah and then I need one for the inside and I won't bore you with all the coloring in again but when I put my sentiment on the inside, and I'll put it on my blog, uh, on my website, I will stamp some of these beautiful moths inside and colour those in as well. Right, okay, so we have got that for the inside. This is our layer. And this is our layer. And, uh, yeah. We're coming up to time, so we're doing quite well. I just got to think of a sentiment to go on the front. What do you think? There we go. So if you've enjoyed the video or you... Uh, I've liked any of the things I've been doing, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps the video be, um, helps my channel so much. You don't, you wouldn't know. And it helps the video get suggested to people who might be interested in this kind of thing, which in turn helps me. Um, and if you're new to my channel, please uh, consider subscribing and click the little bell button for notifications of future videos so you don't miss anything. And I will do that one off camera, that inside one. And what are we going to put on the front? So this is just an image stamp set. It doesn't have a, um, a um, sentiment in there. I'm just trying to think of what I could put on there. I think I know. So I have got the Charming Sentiment stamp set, 
I have got wishing you the happiest birthday. And she's going to go across there on a scrap of white. I could emboss it in, put it on black and do it in white. But I think that might be a bit much. I think in white, wishing you the happiest of birthdays and stamp it in black. Let's try that and see how it looks. I love this stamp set. This Charmy Sentiments I have used to death. You'll see it in loads of my videos. It's got all the really useful, important sentiments you want. The best thing about that stamp set is it has a matching die set. So, you know, when we fussy cut around our words because we like the way it looks, well, it does it for you. It's so cool. I'm not sure if I just smooshed my ink pad into that stamp though, so it might not come out very well. Oh yeah, I like that. That will do me. We're having a day of success. I like it. Right, let's find the dies. Where are you? They are called Sentiment Silhouettes because it silhouettes the sentiments from this set. And the fun part is there's so many dies in this. It's a really good value one. There are so, so many. There's all sorts. Look, you get the um, little candles as well and flowers and hearts and all sorts. The fun part is finding the one that fits around the sentiment you've got. I have used this one quite a lot, so I know which one it is. Right, let's cut that out. Oh, Sam hasn't fallen asleep yet. Thank you, love. Even though it's hot and I'm colouring in and it can get a bit dull. <laughs> oh, thank you, ja uh, um, Janice. Thanks so much. I'm glad you like them. Right, yeah, it was. I'll show you the original one that I made it was inspired by Stampin' Up completely but I was very inspired by what they'd done so I had a go myself right I'm gonna put some washi on that and pop it through the machine There we are. How cool is that? It looks like you fussy cut the words. Love that. <laughs> They're gonna, that's going to go up here and it might go over there actually. Yeah, and glue. So, look at the state of my mini dimensionals. They're getting a bit tatty looking, but we are getting to the end of them on this sheet. <laughs> And then I might even cut a couple. I don't know if they'll fit on the end. There's one. Oh yeah, it does. I've used rather a lot. <laughs> so I think I keep stamping up in business by the amount of dimensionals I buy. Who, um, who finds the backs everywhere? Absolutely flipping everywhere. Wishing you the happiest of birthdays. So, if you know someone who's into moths, fabulous. Um, it does need something else on there. I'm not quite sure. I might come back. We've got some black and white matte dots that I might just pop on there. Have I got... Are they still current? Are they? Ooh, they're nice. Not sure they're current because they're not in my stash and I've taken everything that's not current out of my stash. And I've got some of these. I've obviously chopped them up for a class or something. They're the Adhesive Back Solid Gems and they may work. Let's maybe use a couple of the little ones. No, I don't think they work at all. I think... What have we got here? 
we go back to these. I've got one stuck to my fingernail. How is that? The gold is a good neutral for it, I think. I've made a nice dent in these uh, sequins now. Okay, there we go. I'll show you the original panel I made. This was the original and I actually fussy cut, whatever you would call it, cut out some three of the moths with my snips and popped them on and I was brave enough to cut these little guys out and just roughly around their antennae. That wasn't difficult at all actually, it was much Thought it was going to be harder than it was. It wasn't hard. So I've raised some of them up to get a bit of dimension, but I didn't want to put you through all the cutting out as well. So that was my original, and this was totally inspired by Stampin' Up, and this is the one I've made. So colouring in with Stampin' Blends, these pens here. Colouring in with those. And then... Using your Stampin' Right markers, you can use them to colour in, but we use them. We had an extra way of using them, and we use them to colour our stamp set. So, different pens and different uses. I hope you've enjoyed today's Fun Friday video. I'm sorry it was later than normal and there was lots of colouring in, but if you stuck with me, thank you so much. It really, really, I do appreciate it. Um, if you like anything that you've seen, um, you can buy all the products in my online shop, all the Stampin' Up! stuff at katebolt.stampinup.net or you can find it all over on my website at inkstampshare.ink. If you are watching from the future, please let me know you're watching from the future and, and where you're watching from, I would love to know. I will be back and next week we should be bang on to our normal regime of Tuesdays at 1 and Fridays at 11. Thank you for joining me so much. Oh, Janice, that's really kind of you. Thank you so much. Amanda, moths, dear, I think they're really pretty too. Really pretty moths. I love them. Thanks, Sam. That's really kind of you. I hope your class went well last night. Good luck with your class, Janice. Oh, have a good weekend, everybody. And yeah, sending sunshine your way. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye-bye.